leadership uh, he is uh, giving to our institution and uh, and uh, special thanks to lata ma'am uh, swami sir and vidya shankar sir also who has uh, joined uh, uh, hand towards this uh, webinar program and um, on behalf of jc salem uh, and student community i welcome uh, all our alumni uh, to this uh, Uh, webinar session uh, to share their views uh, and uh, to improve our students uh, uh, skill development uh, to this uh, program and uh, and uh, in this juncture uh, i would request our placement officer mr nurullah sir to say a few words about the importance of the uh, webinar to our student community um so nurullah sir you want to uh, give us few, few words about this if you are audible um i think you might have to unmute uh, sir is it is he muted can you check let's see yeah is he unmuted sorry go ahead sir we we are not able to hear you so far So I went on mute again. There may be some audio issues. Um, so uh, probably we can uh, get started, uh, uh, Lokwani. Yeah, I think we should start, Swami. I don't think we can hear Nurullah sir. Maybe he can wrap up. Uh, yeah. So Nurullah sir, if you are able to hear us, uh, we can uh, give us few words before we start, or else we probably can keep uh, uh, at the end. Okay, I think there are some audio issues. Uh, so, Rafiq, uh, over to you. Okay, thank you. So, uh, welcome everybody. First of all, uh, to this uh, hopefully first in a series of webinars that uh, the uh, GC alumni group is trying to do for uh, their their alma mater. And before we start again, I think uh, Ms. Logavani, you did a great job of uh, setting up the stage and uh, thanking the people involved. So again, thank you, uh, Ms. Logavani, for helping us set this up, and uh, Professor Nurullah. And uh, I also want to thank uh, my friends uh, Vijay Shankar, Lata, and uh, Swami, who are, who are also on the call and helping me set this up. And uh, most importantly, I want to thank you all, students, because I know this is a Saturday morning, and. Uh, I want to, you know, applaud you and congratulate you for taking the initiative and being here for self improvement because this is a long journey. Uh, I want to use the chat box. I cannot see your faces. I cannot hear you. So please, put your comments on the chat box. Make it very, very interactive, right? Because I'm going to, as I'm going to talk later in this talk, communication is key. So if you can just put your comments here, that'd be super. Um, we will have a Q and A session at the very end. So please have your questions ready to uh, ask uh, whenever you can at the end. Uh, I will also be making a PDF of this, PDF of this deck available uh, to all the attendees after. So you don't have to write down all the bullets I'm putting here because I will be sharing this after the call is over. And finally, this session is being recorded. So hopefully we can make that available too. The, the, the agenda is that I want to start with a short icebreaker just to, you know, I don't know you, you know, you don't know me, uh, but you know, we, we share the common bond of GC sale. And so I want to start with that. And then I'm going to talk about the short term goal, landing your first job. We'll take a little break with an exercise. We'll do a long term goals. And then we'll talk right after this call, what are the things you can do to improve your employability skills? Oh, yeah. So real quick, everybody in the chat box, please do me a favor and say hello, hi, how are you, what's up, what's up, anything you want, want to come, anything you want. But please, I want to see that you are here. <laughs> good morning is good too. Good afternoon, good evening, good evening, anything that works. Please, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Hello, 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 hello. I'm going to keep talking, but please keep posting. Thank you so much. So wait. Uh, Ms. Logavani gave me a fantastic introduction. Um, as uh, she said, uh, I've got all the stuff going on. But before that, I also want to say that uh, I, my family is from the Ulundurpet area. I think most of uh, GC Salem's uh, students come from Tamil Nadu. 
And uh, I think it'd be also really cool if you can say which, namaste, yes, namaste, uh, which uh, town or village or city you're from. I'd love to just sort of get an idea of where you all are from because we all are part of the GC family and it'll be good to know each of you. Um, so as Ms. Logavani mentioned, uh, BE, Electronics and Communications Engineering uh, from Salem, 97 batch, MS in Electrical Engineering from Temple University, worked for a few years in VLSI at PJ Engineer, and then went and got my MBA. And then I worked at a couple of different uh, global 500, uh, Fortune 500 companies in various uh, capacities. And finally, now I've got one consulting firm uh, doing management and technology uh, consulting in Los Angeles. Karur, Salem, yeah, nice. Didn't know really. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you all so much for being engaged. I appreciate it so much. Please continue. Now, I want to give you some uh, uh, an, an unofficial biography about myself, right? Uh, GC was one of the, my uh, fond memories of life. So I'm going to give you some unof unofficial information. Uh, when I first joined first year, within a few months, I, I did a dance uh, in the auditorium. And uh, with my friends from my fellow, uh, with my fellow first year uh, classmates. And it was, it went pretty well. And uh, then the seniors got upset for some reason and they started to come and they wanted to rag me. And so I, <laughs> I got scared and I ran away to uh, back to Chennai. And uh, uh, I tried really, really hard to try to transfer from GC Salem to uh, another engineering college, Crescent Engineering and a few others. And I was not able to successfully transfer. And I remember coming back to uh, um, Karpur and uh, you know, it was, uh, I was very scared. I was like, oh man, I don't know if I can make it, uh, you know, four years in this college. But that was so wrong because those four years have been some of them, my, my favorite, my fondest memories in life. Some of my best friends, I mean, as you know, Swami and Vidya Shankar and Lata are here on this call with us. So I was very much involved in the auditorium. I was, uh, I loved to uh, perform. I, uh, I loved uh, going to the central gate and having a hot cup of tea going to the Daba, et cetera. I don't know if all those things exist. I think the college has changed a lot since then. So, um, but when I came to the US, me and my batchmate, we created the first uh, website for GC Salem on the internet. So it still exists if you wanna check it out. So quick check-in. I want you all to post again in the chat box because I'm going to make you post in the chat box. What are you looking for? Good to know the Daba exists. <laughs> what are you looking for in this webinar? What do you want to get out of this webinar? And I will try to make sure that uh, we try to address all those questions or concerns that you may have, because this is a great opportunity for you to tap into us, the alumni, and really get all the information so you are best prepared going forward. As uh, somebody says, no ragging, don't worry. That is such a relief, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, the first section, how do you land your first job, right? When you take a step back and think about it, every company is looking for your raw mental horsepower, your brain, right? Because that is your greatest, greatest asset coming from GC Salem. So just know that you have that mental horsepower. So I want you to take a step back and appreciate yourself. You're all merit-based students, right? And there, there are so many thousands of colleges where you can pay money, get in, but this is not one of them. I, um, I hope who is, uh, okay, thank you. And so you're all here merit-based students. You're, you are hardworking, you're intelligent, you're driven, you're cream of the crop. So the fact that you are in GC Salem speaks for all these attributes and qualities about yourself. And you need to leverage these qualities. You don't have to prove yourself to anybody. You just have to know that you are the best and you deserve the best opportunities. Which means you have to first start by internalizing and knowing in your mind, your heart and your body that you are enough, right? You have to come from that point of view when you go for an interview, I am enough, right? 
and what you believe is what becomes true. So you have to start with saying, I am enough. Can you all please post I am enough on the chat box? I am enough. Yes, you are. You are enough. Thank you. Yes, you are all enough. You're smart people, you are enough. Now, what is the interviewer looking for? Right? They, 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 they know they're coming to an engineering college. They know that they're going to expect solid technical skills mm -hmm. from you. And I know you all are really smart people. You do very well in your aptitude tests. You are, have been very good in your entrance exams. But beyond that, the interviewer is looking for, can I take this person and put them on a project team? Can they work well with other people? Uh, the world of technology is changing so fast. Is this person willing to learn, right? Um, mm -hmm. Is this person, can this guy or girl think about solutions, discuss the solutions with their team members and defend them? Because somebody else might say, you know what? Uh, uh, I think your solution is good, but uh, this is another way to do it. We should use tall technologies and agile methodology. Can you then defend your ideas and say, no, in fact, I think we must go with, uh, you know, CICD, whatever it is. So you have to be willing to defend your ideas. And they want to see, are you somebody who is willing to go the extra mile, to push hard and really put in that extra effort that's required to meet uh, deliverables and deadlines? And most probably they will know that this is possible with you because you have, you made it to GC Salem, right? You are smart people. You're willing to work hard. They are also seeing, is this person somebody who's actually willing to listen? Are you actually listening to me or are you just waiting for your chance to speak, right? If you're just waiting for a chance to speak, it means that you don't really care about what the other person is saying. You don't really respect other people's point of view, but rather if you're listening and you actually incorporate what they're saying in your responses, that means you respect what you're saying. You are somebody who's a team player. You are someone who is excellent at communications. Most, you know, you, you have firms that come in that might be uh, a product firm, or you might have firms or companies that interview uh, you that might be consulting firms. And consulting firms are, you know, they're looking to say, can I take you and put you on a client project? Can I put you in front of a client and will you be okay? Will you be able to work with the client? They wanna know also, because you might, if, you, if you're in a consulting firm like Accenture, TCS, Cognizant, they wanna know, can I take you, put you on a team and then be on a long flight with you going to Tokyo, London, New York. And can I sit and talk to you? Can I have a conversation with you so that I'm not bored? So that I'm, uh, you know, we can, we can actually talk intelligent stuff. So these are the soft skills that will really set you apart. So in a sense, you have to be uh, what I call a complete package. You have to be a complete package in terms of hard skills and soft skills. In terms of hard skills, forgetting everything else, engineering, programming, all those technologies, they want to know that you can generally do problem solving logical thinking. And this typically they test with, a, with an aptitude test, which if I understand right, GC Salem students are excellent at. So this is not a problem. They also wanna see if you have domain specific expertise, right? Can you talk about your engineering, uh, civil, metallurgical, uh, ECE, like whatever, right? All your technical knowledge, are you good? Can you use specific technical tools? Can you use the programming languages? Are you able to actually do project management? Can you actually do things on time? Those are the hard skills. And my understanding is you guys, you are excellent at it. That's not an issue. I also wanna know where do you stand in terms of soft skills, right? Where are your written communications? You need to be really good at writing because you are going to communicate a lot through email. What about spoken communications? Can you be in a meeting and articulate your thoughts clearly? And then not just one-on-one, -on -one, can you actually stand up and present in front of the C-suite, the chief executive officer, the VP, the director? You need to have speaking skills and you need to be able to manage relationships, you know, because a lot of different people will got to come and say, I want this, you know, maybe sales is going to say this, product is going to say this, um, Marketing is going to say something else. Can you manage all those relationships? Can you also do all this while being polite and professional? And at the end, the last one is very important. You have to learn to sell. I am selling to you right now an idea. 
when you go to an interview, you're selling yourself to them. When you go for a promotion, you're selling yourself to them. When you go meet, when you, let's say you get staffed on a project in, um, uh, let's say you get staffed on a project in Paris, you're gonna make, meet friends, you're gonna have to sell yourself to them so you can form those relationships. We're, we're constantly selling ourselves, selling human. Can you do that? So at the end of the day, I want to know you to understand one thing. Technologies change, programming languages evolve, but there are some timeless skills that are based on human nature itself. If you can master those, you will be untouchable. So general problem solving and logical thinking are timeless skills. In the chat box, I want you to say, what else do you think are timeless skills? Any of these soft skills, which are you think is a, is a timeless skill that is always going to be useful? Please put that in the chat box. It can be anything you want, really. I'm waiting for the first response before I go. Yeah, leadership, public speaking, that's right. That's right. Communications, all of this, all the soft skills, all the soft skills, presentation and public gathering. Exactly. You think Elon Musk and uh, Jeff Bezos are able to do all this because they're of their technical skills? Nope, all your soft skills. They know how to convince people to join them in, them in their vision. You have to have that. Thank you, please continue to post, I'll continue. So let's take a hard look at the reality of human communications. We spend a lot of time talking about the written word, what we speak, but the fact is if you look at this chart, 93% of human communications is non-verbal. I mean, it's body language and there's not the spoken word itself, but the way it's spoken. So you have to understand that, you know, why do, when you think, think about it, when you, when you chat in WhatsApp on Facebook, you use so many emoticons, right? Smiley face, crying face, all that, because the word itself is never enough. We need the emotion to go with it. I'm using my language. I'm, I'm using my full body, my face to try to communicate with you guys. So you have to understand that we, if you excel at human communications, you again will be super powerful, right? And understanding that is knowing that 93% of that is not just the word itself. <coughs> if at any point I am boring or I'm not making sense, please post in the chat box so I know that uh, I, need to, I need to change my approach or change the message. Please let me know. Thank you, thank you for the feedback, I appreciate it. Louder? Okay, I'll try to uh, speak right into the microphone. Thank you for that feedback. Thank you. Thank you guys for your feedback. So, there are, you know, have you heard the, the saying, perception is reality, right? If I see and I see certain things about you that I think is my reality. What you perceive is what is reality. So you have to control what the interviewer, what your manager, what your client sees about you. Number one, visually, right? What do they see about you? Be well-groomed, right? Comb your hair. Um, I mean, you can have the latest fancy hairstyles shaved on the side, mohawk, whatever you want, but keep it clean dress professionally and iron your clothes. And uh, you know, for men, uh, you have to tuck in your shirt just for the interview at least and uh, polish your shoes. In general, I found that uh, you know, the girls tend to be much more uh, self-aware about this. And so uh, in general, I would say for guys, especially if you, if you go for a product company, like say VMware, uh, you might be able to get away with going to the interview in a t-shirt and jeans. But if you're going to interview with a consulting firm, I would recommend that you dress a bit more uh, professionally because it is always okay to be a bit overdressed than to be underdressed. Next one, body language. Your body is an instrument. Learn how to control your body, starting with your face, right? Uh, smile. Just a gentle smile. Don't grin, right? Don't be that creepy guy with a grin. Just smile, right? Be pleasant to look at. 
uh, don't make eye contact, but don't stare. It is, it is hard because once you become aware that you're looking at somebody's face, sometimes you can be very self-conscious and start to just focus on your face. <coughs> don't do that. Instead, look at the middle here. <coughs> Soft focus it right in the middle of the eyes. Come here and go back. Come here, go back. So you look into their eyes briefly and then come back here. So that's a good way. Looking into their eyes briefly is good, but not all the time. So just sort of have a steady gaze. Right? So just maintain that steady gaze. Uh, if they do initiate a handshake, especially in these days of COVID and coronavirus, uh, if they initiate the handshake, feel free to handshake if you're comfortable. <coughs> if they do not offer the hand, don't reach out proactively because they might not be comfortable. Excuse me. Uh, and finally, stand up straight. We don't often realize, including myself, that we are slightly crouched, especially because we have our phones in front of us all the time, that we don't have a strong, steady, uh, straight uh, pose. So one way to practice having your posture straight is to stand against the wall, you know, back against the wall, and just see how that feels and make that a habit. All these things, when you combine, you know, if you uh, smile, make eye contact, stand straight, and shake a firm hand, right? Not a, not a dead fish, right? Firm handshake. That will convey that you are somebody who is equal to them. You are somebody who's smart and confident about what you bring to the table. So practice this, it's very important. Next, how you speak and sound. Um, in general, we have a tendency in India to, uh, to also be deferential to the other person because they're there to hire us. So we want to be careful, and this is something I've struggled with myself, is how do we sound? We want to speak loudly, right? We want to, we want to be confident. I want to speak, but I don't want to yell, right? I don't want to be loud and shouting. I just want to be clear and loud. I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be just mumbling and saying, you know, I don't, I don't want to sound nervous, right? I want to be clear. I want my voice has to be heard. And you got to speak slowly. There is also a tendency, again, I've done this myself, is when I don't know or when I'm not confident, I will tend to speak very fast because I'm like, I'm trying to fill the space and I'm afraid that I'm, uh, you know, uh, that, you know, that they might, they might find out that I really don't know anything. And so I'm going to be careful about that. No. So you want to slow down, right? Slow down, uh, be confident and speak loudly. And I know I have a naturally soft voice. So this is something I, I work with, uh, work on myself all the time. And this is something, it's an easy way. If you look at any major leader speaking, um, you will notice the way they stand and they take their time because I am important. What I have to say is important. So you feel that way and you say, I'm going to take my time and I'm going to respond clearly. Next. These are ninja secrets, right? Who here likes ninjas? If you like ninjas, post ninjas in the chat box. Ninjas. I'm a huge fan of Kung Fu movies and ninjas. Anybody? Anybody love, love ninjas? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Some ninjas. OK. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So. The number one, this is like, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a more subliminal next level stuff, right? An interview, a, a secret to building relationships with people is to mirror their body language. So, you know, if somebody is uh, talking, listening to you like this, you might actually do the same. Or if somebody is, um, you know, uh, drinking a glass of water, if you do that at the same time, that's a mirroring. And you will actually, if you, if you observe human people interacting around the world, you'll notice a lot of people, a lot of times they, they, when two people are connecting, you will see that their body postures are very similar. So you can use this consciously to try to build a subliminal connection with your interviewer. You can also do the same thing with the wording. If they use certain phrases, project management, risk, uh, you know, let's say uh, agile methodologies, whatever it is, right? If you use those phrases back with them, at some level, they'll feel like this person is connecting with me. This person gets me. So use your body and your words to connect with that other person. 
also be structured in your responses. Most people uh, don't like it when you just talk and you don't know where they're going, where they're coming from, where they are in their thought process. But if you can show you are an engineer, a smart engineer, and you can structure your response and say, uh, for example, let's they say, let's say, uh, if they say can, using using Python, uh, uh, how would you program this machine language, machine learning algorithm, right? And your answer should say, using Python, my approach to this machine learning algorithm would be, right? So you have included what they said, and then you're using that to give your answer. So in addition to also connecting with the interviewer, what this does is it gives you time to formulate your response, right? So use their question as a way to connect with them and to buy yourself time to say or give your response. And then in your response, I would say my algorithm would consist of three parts. The opening where I'm going to set up the variables, the middle where I go to the computations and the end where I pass the results back. Boom, 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 right? You, you have three parts. You can say I have, uh, five parts to my response. I have uh, a beginning, middle, and end. But having that sort of a structured response shows them that you think in a structured manner. And if you feel comfortable doing this, I would say, end your response with saying, does it answer your, your question? Or uh, do you have any more questions? Or uh, you can even say, I have uh, uh, an additional solution. Would you be open to hearing that? So those are different ways in which you can sort of talk to them in a structured way, and also make them think that you are somebody who is willing to have a conversation as opposed to just saying, you ask me a question, I give a response, I wait for you, right? No, in the real world, you'll be engaging in a conversation. And let's see, uh, finally, interview them back. You have to come at this as a, as a perspective of saying, I'm, you interviewing me, I'm interviewing you too. I want to know if you are a good company for me, right? So if they say, do you have any questions? Ask questions, but be genuinely interested in the company, which means the day before you research the company, you look at the job profile and be prepared to ask all kinds of questions, right? You can even ask them open-ended questions that would be applicable to any company. You know, you can ask them, what kind of growth opportunities do you provide to uh, fresh hires? What kind of pre career progression do you have? Most consulting firms, you know, start with an associate, senior associate, manager, etc. Uh, do you provide uh, additional training opportunities? And this is one of my favorite questions because uh, it, I think, gives you to connect with the interviewer at a personal level. You can ask them, so why do you work in this company? What do you like about it, right? So it's not more important than asking, giving the answers. If you can ask the right questions, it really will set you apart. <laughs> so sample interview questions interview questions um this is very common across i've been i've talked to a bunch of hr people in preparation for this webinar and they all said these are some questions that everybody asks right they want to know what do you plan to do in two years where do you want to see yourself in five years in 10 years right they want to know that you have a plan it doesn't matter that you, you, your plans might change. Everybody's plan changes as more information comes in, as they get more experience, but they want to know that you have a plan. You want to do an MBA, become a subject matter expert, or you know, I want to work five years in the private sector, then I want to go into public service with an IAS, whatever, right? So think about just having some sort of a plan for yourself. Uh, understand what your strengths and weaknesses are. They might ask you, what are your strengths and weaknesses? Or they might say, give me, what is the biggest win in your life so far? You can say my biggest win was I, you know, uh, I really struggled with a lot of family issues in order to get into GC Salem. That is a big win. That's fine. They can ask what's your biggest failure, and you can, you know, again, you can be honest but position that as a positive or as a learning, right? They can say you can say my biggest learning is that uh, <coughs> I um, I get so caught up in my tasks that I lose track of time, and then I, you know. I have to be, you know, I might miss my deadlines, but I'm working on it, right? Always say your failures, you always say that you're working on it, you're improving on it. So that is, you don't stop at just talking about what your weakness is, but the fact that you are proactively working on it. And this similar, they can ask you about your hobbies and interests. They want to see that you're passionate about something. 
uh, they also might ask you about current affairs. You know, what do you think about the fact that uh, climate change is a big issue? What can we do about it? So these are a small sample of the possible interview questions that you can expect. And finally, your elevator pitch. Your elevator pitch, imagine you are <coughs> you're, um, you, um, in an office, right? And uh, you're waiting for an elevator, a lift, and then uh, you get into the uh, lift and then you're the, the hiring manager at uh, let's say Facebook gets into the lift. You have 30 seconds in which you can talk with them. And they're like, oh, so, you know, tell me about yourself, uh, Mohan. And uh, Mohan, you should be ready to say, well, you know, um, I am a, a fresh graduate uh, from GC Salem with a B in uh, metallurgical engineering. And uh, I think you should hire me because I have three reasons, one, two, three, boom, boom, boom. Right, so have that ready to go at all times. Because you never know when somebody, uh, you might get asked that at an interview or you might get asked that at a career recruitment fair or when you meet somebody randomly, right? And having that ready is like a short, easy advertising, advertisement message for yourself. And practicing this in front of a mirror. I, I use the mirror all the time and just look into the mirror and just practice saying that. Initially, it might feel a bit um, awkward, but with practice, just deliberate practice, you'll get really good at it. And trust me, this will be very useful for you. <clears throat> Finally, the last portion of this section is that, you know, um, you are all freshers, right? You, you're still starting your career. <clears throat> so you don't have work experience. You need to translate your life experience into the corporate world. So the question is, how do you take your life experiences and put them in a way that makes it interesting or attractive to a company? In my case, let's say I was a fine new student. I had danced at uh, this event called Jekyll Fest. I'm a huge Michael Jackson fan. And uh, so I would dance to Billie Jean. And uh, if they had said, uh, so if I, if I had to take that experience and position it for the corporate world, I would say, you know what? I did this dance performance at an uh, inter-college festival. It shows that I can set goals and I can, I'm willing to work hard for my goals. It shows that I'm willing to take risk and perform in front of so many people, but I know no risk, no reward. So I'm willing to take risks. Uh, I, was, uh, I helped organize uh, this festival. So it shows that I am also, I have some leadership qualities. And the fact that I even took part in this festival as opposed to just sitting or not even taking part shows that I'm a team player. I want to, I want team GCE to do well. So I took part in it. I contributed in my way, right? These are ways in which you can do that. So you can take the same thing. And essentially what you want to do is take buckets. Uh, let me just move this chat window. You want to take buckets of your life. You, you're, you, so you have studies, you have extracurricular activities, you have sports, you have culturals, you have hobbies, right? Uh, and then any family stuff. You can take you can you can take all your experiences and put them into these five buckets. You know, 20, 21, 22, whatever years of life you have so far, right? You can put them into these buckets and you can translate them into applicable corporate uh, professional experience. So these are some examples I've put here. So I'm going to leave this slide here, but you all should have received a Word document with this table. So I want you all to take five minutes and uh, take some time to sort of real quickly, right? Just off the top of your mind, fill out those uh, specific and translation if you can. And uh, we'll take a break for five minutes. You can also use this for a bathroom break if you need it. I'm just gonna pause the video here for now. If you have any questions, please post in the chat box. Lovely. Yeah. Hello. Uh, good morning. I'm Nurullah. Yes, sir. I, uh, I, sorry, I am a little bit late. My, my mobile phone uh, could not be connected at the right time. No. I was trying to initially. <laughs> okay, welcome you. Uh, welcome, welcome uh, you particularly for this uh, webinar session. Thank you, sir. As uh, uh, Dr. Lohan told. So uh, I think uh, these are, uh, if I am correct, this is the first time we are having this uh, webinar under this uh, COVID-19 period for 
our special need to for the pleasure and training activities yes sir so in that way is the campus to corporate industry the experience what we have shared so far yes, is really a, a useful tips thank you sir actually you can give uh, some more uh, tips also how to work on it how i have work, uh, work on it yeah yes sir how to work have... on it so what the students what the industry actually expects and what the students they have to do how what what type of skills they have to acquire or develop so that they can impress the committee members as well as during the attendance also absolutely so yeah, so i think in the next session you please come with some more points to uh, motivate our students because i think uh, mm -hmm. as far as we uh, our institute is concerned uh, the original circuit branch csce ec triple e these okay. students are having a very very bright chances chances in the software industry okay but unfortunately due to the lagging in preparation maybe they may, they may have lack in guidance or some other so they don't know what to prepare some sometimes also okay so this may lag in the doing the it may reveals in the final interviews so they may closely lose the opportunity yeah and yeah. also you must still what sort of attitude they have to develop within the college yes, so sir. which will uh, very much useful for them to acquire the right job at the right time so yes, uh, this is my request uh, okay anyway welcome you uh, once again i welcome uh, I welcome you on behalf of our college and principal and your whole team thank you sir for this uh, webinar session thank you thank you so welcome. much sir thank you yeah. we are uh, definitely uh, we have a series of webinars uh, other uh, batchmates of mine have planned as well so hopefully we can continue to serve and help our fellow students yes sir yeah thank you because we are, so the uh, covid 19 you know, on the other side even though it causes uh, creates a lot of troubles but uh, this time uh, 90 covid 19 has introduced a new technology to the students <laughs> so uh, they only need not come to the college yeah so uh, over the uh, internet devices they can view and they can uh, get, get the help of uh, your uh, the eminent mm -hmm. <laughs> almost like you yes sir yes, so sir. what uh, what is next that's a very big question what is next <laughs> so the fixing of goals is also a very big challenge for this uh, for my final students i think uh, in my view so yes, this sort of uh, 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 training exposure must be given from second year itself I so think third so. yes. third semester itself. Yes. So yes. that they can get the right, uh, they get the right train at the final year. Yes, absolutely. So uh, I think if we start the sessions right from the third semester, so really the output will be, you can see very good, huge output and better one also. Yes. Whenever sir. committee visits, they are asking how many, what is the placement statistics, and next question, what is this uh, perks they are getting? So okay. uh, what is the salary wise? Okay. So other institutes are getting able to get more than 10 lakhs per annum, mm -hmm. whereas our our students are only very very few students that are able to get only 6.5 lakhs per annum. Okay. So okay. rest of the students are landing in the, the NBD three and four. Okay. So they want to increase the average salary also we can of that. the students placed. Mm -hmm. So to attain this level also, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, we need support from uh, you guys. Absolutely, sir. So, uh, please. Hopefully, hopefully this, this, is is start, this is the yeah, start. This is the start of yeah, uh, the journey. Yeah, please, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So anyway, th thank you for this uh, initiative. Uh, I think uh, uh, Miss Lada, Mrs. Lada is is she has uh, contacted the principal and further uh, uh, arrangements have been made in, say, in the with the principal. So mm -hmm. we are having fortunately we have the EC principal. So you are also from EC. Yes. So I think the English <laughs> is a very strong bond. Uh, I can see. Okay. There's a connection. So, yeah, yeah, very strong bond. Yes. So far we have seen only the CAC uh, alumnus, uh, alumni coming to our college. But this is the first time I'm seeing uh, EC. So EC, uh, even uh, person, our alumnus coming coming down or coming help. So, so it's a... Uh, now it's a open platform, so everybody can see. Yes, yes, yes. But of course, from metallurgy we have seen, in CSE we have seen, but EC is somewhat we have missed so far. But this time I think because of your you, the is the gap is also being filled out. Yes. So in the meanwhile, same way, uh, you have to try to get the triple guys also, triple elements also, yes. so that 
they may get a very close interaction with all the department alumni, uh, alumni, uh, alumni to strengthen the placements as well as the uh, institutions output. Yes, so sir. thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. Um, that was uh, appreciate Dr. Uh, Professor Norula uh, sharing his thoughts, and I hope uh, this was inspiring, inspiring to you all students as well. And um, I, I want to get back on the, uh, the the presentation, but I have two questions, uh, and I want to know that we have noted this question. Uh, Vidya Shankar or Swami, or if you're there, have you noted this question? Can we get back to them after? Hey, yes, uh, Rafik. Yeah. Can you hear me, Rafik? Hey, so the question was, um, you know, hey, I'm civil engineer. I don't want to be constrained in a room, like, uh, you know, in a, in a software environment. How does this work? Okay. Yeah, I see that. So I, my, I, be, I believe uh, Darshana uh, is, uh, wants to not just stay in the civil sector, but maybe uh, wants to explore opportunities in the software sector. Is that right? Uh, if that is right, I believe it is very much possible, Darshana, that because at your level, when you're coming in as a fresh graduate from an engineering college, like I said, they want your brain. They can train you. They want your ability to problem solve, to think logically. And they basically want the timeless skills, right? The, all those things, the hard skills is logical thinking, critical thinking, and uh, problem solving, which they test in your aptitude test. And then they want you to be good in your communications and soft skills. They can teach you programming language. They can teach you technologies. That's not an issue. So if you can work on that, you will be able to make the transition because even in my batch, in our batch, we were able to, we have several students who made the same transition. I hope that was the question and I answered it correctly. Uh, if not, please uh, add a follow-up question. Um, Previous to that, somebody asked me, uh, uh, each HR manager will have different personalities, so how to adapt, adapt to them? And I believe that uh, this is a skill that you have to develop uh, by working on your communication sense, uh, people observing skills, right? And the, 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 the tips, the ninja trick that I shared, right? Mirroring of body language, mirroring of your, uh, uh, the words they use, all these are universal. It doesn't matter what your personality is, at a subconscious level, we are social animals. So if you can connect with them at the subconscious level, you will connect with them in some way. So the, the, the tips I've been giving you so far will work with all personality types. So hopefully that helps you. And uh, we can again come back to this in the Q&A session at the end. But I want to make sure I get back to the uh, rest of the slides for now. Thank you for the questions. Um, before I go, I just want to see people post uh, at least 10 people saying, yes, I finished. Yes, I finished the exercise. Did anybody do the exercise? Is anybody, is everybody back? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I see a few people People have been raising their hands. And I'm, I, I'm sorry, I'm not able to look at that right now. So if you can please raise your hand or you know, have your question ready for the Q&A session. We'll come back to it at the end of the presentation. OK, thank you. So I'm going to continue for now. Now, we've talked about getting a job, right? How do you land your first job? And we can go back and discuss in length in the Q&A session. But I want to go to the next level, which is how do you future-proof your career? So looking into the future, and you, you all are right at the edge where these transitions are happening, right? Artificial intelligence is coming into play. Automation is taking over. A lot of changes are happening in the world. So you are right at the cusp, your batch. So you have to develop your soft skills, right? You cannot just be technically, you have to be technically fluent because you are engineers, but your success depends on you having soft skills, interacting with people, social intelligence, creativity, working with unpredictable environments because the world is changing faster than we can handle. So one way that you can prepare yourself is to think like an entrepreneur, like a businessman, right? You, you should not count on spending your entire career one, in one company. 
if you to think like an entrepreneur, like a businessman means sort of saying, what does the market need in terms of skills? And which of these skills do I want to serve or be good at? And one way to do this is to do market research. You have access to so much information online that is telling you, this is what we want. Nokri.com, monster.com, LinkedIn, Dice, Indeed. You know, if you're looking for freelance work, Upwork, all these places, go look at what the top paying jobs are and look at what skills they're willing to pay good money for. That will give you a good idea of what is good for you to get strong with, to get armed with, so you can continue to build your career for the next couple of years. So you need to then prepare your product, which is you, with the skills, the work experience, the degrees. You have your BE, but is there any certification you need to get? And life experiences, all these that will then basically prepare you to be most aligned with what the market wants. So that's what thinking like an entrepreneur is. So I would say in terms of immediate employability value, right? You focus on developing a brand in the next couple of years once you get started. You know, for example, you can say, I will become a machine learning expert in the automotive industry. You know, I'm gonna become a data science specialist in, um, in um, marketing analytics, whatever it is, right? So if any of you have any ideas, I'd love to see you post some ideas on what kind of, if you have a goal, do you have some sort of vision about what you wanna be? Please post that. I'd like to see some ideas on what kind of expert you wanna become. I wanna become an expert at building uh, environmentally sustainable buildings as a civil engineer. I wanna become an expert at finding new ways of using of extracting metal that is uh, cost efficient. I want to become the first metallurgical engineer that goes to the asteroid belt with SpaceX. I mean, the, the, the universe is open to you, right? So think about that. And also, I want you to understand that engineers are the ones who bend the arc of history, right? They are the ones who decide which timeline we choose to go. There are so many different possibilities of the future, but engineers decide which way we go. So if you can focus on identifying and solving the big problems of humanity, you will be secure. <clears throat> this is just a small list of all the issues that humanity faces today. So in terms of immediate employability, in an HR interview, somebody might ask you, uh, so you know, what are you passionate about? Or where do you see yourself 10 years from now? Both of these questions, you can talk about this part, right? If you're, you're like, I, I, as a mechanical engineer, I believe that uh, we need to find uh, new ways of propulsion that will help us reach Earth to Mars much more quickly. That's a big goal, but that shows the interviewer that you are willing to think big, that you're willing to think really ahead, right? And that you're passionate about something. Like somebody has posted you're an expert in space science. Absolutely. Space is the new frontier and we have a lot to explore and do there. So find something that really connects with your heart, right? And then talk about that in your interview. So please continue to post about what you're passionate about, right? There are so many issues, <laughs> aging, bionics, can we, can we get 3D printed hearts, 3D printed kidneys? All these are ways in which engineers can make a big difference in the world. <laughs> and I want to also say that so when you think about the, your life, right? Think, imagine your life is on the x-axis and this is the y-axis. The arc of your life is like this. And little, the angle, small angle here makes a big difference in where you end up, right? When, when they shoot a spaceship going to the moon or to Mars, they don't just shoot it off. They keep making, my, you know, they have these little um, jets on the side. They keep making tiny, yeah. tiny adjustments throughout so that they eventually get to their goal. So you think about, what do you want to, you know, where do you want to go? And then check in with yourself every six months, like, or at least once a year, right? Where are you, where you want to be? Where are you, where you want to be? And what was the next job that will take you there? What are the skills you need to get to that next job? And a big part of this is hiring, uh, working with mentors, you know, somebody who's, you know, alumni, we are a good resource to be a mentor and a guide. You know, just like, a, you know, companies hire Accenture and TCS and whatever, to work with them because they're too busy doing their day-to-day -day job that they cannot focus on the big long-term strategic work. 
same thing. You have to hire a consultant for yourself or, you know, not even hire, right? Just find somebody who's willing to work with you and help you. In general, you want to also be aware of the people you hang out with. There is a saying by, uh, it's a very well-known entrepreneur, Tim Ferriss. He says, you are the average of the five people you hang out with the most. So if you have a goal, then think about what are the people that are close to that goal and try to hang out with them, right? So work with mentors and guides. Try to hang out with people that are aligned with the goals that you want to get to. And even if you can, work with a life coach or a career coach, right? Who can help you structure your thoughts, find out what you want, and come up with a plan for you to go there. At the end of the day, success is not an action. It is what you do repeatedly. Success is habit. So form habits that you don't have to think about, right? It's just habit. But the better habits you have, the better your chances of success. So if you can, if you, if you, if this is something that's a long-term goal, in the short term, the fact that you can take feedback, that you can take criticism and work on yourself is a sign that you're willing to take feedback. You know, at companies every year, they might have 360 degree feedback, right? Can you take that feedback and improve on yourself? They want to see that. At the so think about, so if they ask you to an HR interview, you can say, I would love to get mentorship and, you know, get constructive criticism so I can continue to work on myself. Uh, next steps. Now, this is, we talked about the short term, we talked about the long term. What can you do today after this call? Let's talk about that. As a homework for today, I don't know how many of you have an interview with Accenture QCS or um, I'm going to throw some of the names. Let's say Facebook, Tesla. I don't know who's coming to interview, right? So if what do, you have access to Google, we didn't have Google in our day, right? So if you, you have access to Google, ask questions, all the answers there. If you know, if you can ask the right question, the right answer exists. So ask questions and get information from Google. And then do research about the companies you're going to interview with, right? What products do they sell? What services do they sell? What are the clients they work with? All this will help you be better prepared and also ask questions. Because, and I'm telling you this, this is just a law of percentages, right? Statistically speaking, maybe 20% of students will do this, right? Even though this is common knowledge, the fact that you did this work will set you apart. If you're looking to set yourself apart, do this work. As I mentioned, practice your elevator pitch. What is your elevator pitch? You should hire me. Uh, Kumar, because I am uh, a GC selling graduate, which means that I have an intelligent, hardworking, smart, and I've got the three main reasons I've been working on this FPGA project uh, that uh, you know um, implements uh, a fast Fourier transform, and I've been um, you know uh, I did uh, I, I held a symposium, and so I have leadership skills, and I also um, uh, was a member of the Rotary Club, right? Whatever it is, so practice your elevated pitch. Prepare three questions just three questions to ask about the company that you're interviewing for. You know, these are some examples, but in general, I think three questions is not too much to ask. And then get enough sleep, right? Uh, later research so shows that you need to get at least eight hours of sleep. When you're, when you're younger, you can get away with five. But I'm saying in general, you want to make sure you're well rested so that the next day you can perform at your optimum level. On the day of interview, <clears throat> you should do physical stretches. Uh, your body is a machine. It's an instrument. So the more you warm it up, the better it will perform, right? So make sure you do physical stretches like, you know, neck, your arms, your, you know, your, your chest, just uh, hip, hip flexes, all that, right? Make sure you do that. And uh, I would say that, uh, you know, start with a physical exercise, then do vocal warm up. I do a lot of, um, you know, like theater work here, uh, improv work in uh, Los Angeles, is the center, you know, Hollywood, right? So we do a lot of vocal warm ups. How do you make your, your muscles, your jaw muscles, your lip muscles, and your tongue, they're all able to get warmed up so you can speak clearly, right? Or you can articulate words. So there are vocal warm ups to do that. Pataka, 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 pa, right? Mow, mwah, mwah, right? 
So these are different ways in which you can warm up this body and this vocal cord that you have. So when you go to the interview, you are ready to talk, right? You are ready to engage with them because your, your instrument is primed up. You also want to do mental warm ups. You can do maybe some crosswords, maybe some apps, just to get, get your brain going, right? And uh, there is something called improv. I haven't talked about this here. It's the next level stuff. But you can do improv, for example, to again, get your mind going, to, to get your empathetic uh, abilities warmed up and going so you can easily form connections, easily connect with, uh, network with your interviewer. So make sure you warm up. You might think you don't need it, but it will make a difference. What do you have to lose, right? Um, eat a light breakfast, don't eat too heavy, but don't also, also don't go without eating because I've seen people faint <laughs> from not eating breakfast. So get some food in your body so that you have the energy to sit through the interview and uh, make sure you reach there well enough in time so you're not sweating because I know it gets pretty hot in uh, Salem. I don't know, has global change, uh, global, uh, global warming, has it impacted Salem in any way? Is it, how, what's the hottest? it gets these days in Salem. Anybody? What, how, how, how did it get this summer? Thirty-five, one or five. Oh, somebody's talking American. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, that is pretty hot. It's so hot in summer. Okay, yeah. It used to be so hot when you were there. I can only imagine how it is now. Okay. Okay, thank you. I know if I do eat. Yeah. So uh, get there early. Don't sweat it, please. So on the day of interview, you do the interview. I've given you all the ninja tips, all the secret ways in which you can connect with the interviewer, all the kind of questions you can answer. At the end of the interview, thank the interviewer. You know, say thank you for the opportunity and uh, ask them, you know, one professional to another, can I connect with you on LinkedIn? Or uh, if you're okay, can I get your work email, please? Say please, right? And if they share, thank you, take it. And then after that, go to the central gate. Does the central gate still exist? Like, you know, with all the tea shops and um, um, all the restaurants, does it still exist? Awesome, yes, yeah. <laughs> Fond memories of CG. Okay. Go get a nice hot milky chai, get some pakodas, egg bonda, whatever you like, right? And just take a moment to say you've done something that is worth rewarding yourself for, right? Reward yourself always with little things for the hard work you do. And then afterwards, that later that evening or the next day, send them a thank you email if they give you the email or send them a LinkedIn message. Thank you for coming to campus and for the opportunity. I look forward to staying in touch. Who knows, maybe not this job, but maybe in the future, they might still be an option for you, okay? And this ties into a philosophy, I think, right? And this is com comes from the Bhagavad Gita, right? Don't, don't connect yourself to the outcome. Just focus on the journey. If you don't get this job, fine. Opportunities will come. Opportunities come when you stay prepared, right? So this is about the journey of continuing to learn and be good at communications and soft skills. There is a lot of work to be done in this world, right? So jobs will keep coming. You just stay focused on learning and self-improvement because remember at the end of the day, right? You are enough. You're smart, you're GCEMs, you deserve the best. And so if you believe it, it will become true. And with that, uh, I just want to say that is almost the ending, but this is one thing, you know, it's just when you graduate, don't stop learning. You be a student the rest of your life. There's so much to learn. There's so many free resources to learn from. This is a TED talk that if you can, uh, I think hopefully on the PDF, you can see it, right? What is the future of jobs going to be like? What are some books you can read in which you can improve the chances of you making friends and connecting and influencing people, right? The psychology of persuading people. Because at the end of the day, it's not a computer that's hiring you. It's people that are hiring you. It's people that you'll be working with, right? So you've got to work with people. And then if you really want to go to the next level of personal development, uh, this is like really advanced stuff, right? Our brains, we have beta waves, which is the level that we are at right now, uh, high frequency. 
and then we have alpha waves, theta waves, and delta waves, right? If you can get to the theta level, that is where your creativity and imagination and uh, the ability to problem solve really comes to life. The theta level is where children from ages zero to seven are. They're the most likely to learn and absorb information. So there are ways in which you can get your brain to operate at these different levels, right? So this is, for example, uh, um, uh, a soundtrack that you can listen to that through binaural beats will get your brain into that state of being. And then you can be in the state of being able to focus and work and be creative. So just so many resources, reach out to me. Um, so yeah, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. This is my email address. I can give you a lot more tips and information. Um, but with that, I wanna wrap up this webinar and I wanna thank you all for your patience. And uh, let's have some questions and answers. So if you wanna just go back and revisit any topic, let me know, open to it. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. So actually, uh, Principal Madam wants to join shortly once the session is over. So uh, shall we inform the principal to join shortly? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, um, I think. How much time you require to wind up? Uh, be there, Anna, for 10, 10 minutes? I think, yeah, maybe. Maybe if it's, it depends on the number of questions students have, sir. Sure, sure. Okay. Then uh, shortly we'll inform the principal, madam, to join. And I think she wants to convey the thanks or appreciation, uh, appreciation from, for the, from the institution to you, you yes, speci sir. specifically. Thank oh, you, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I hope uh, the, the numbers are registered number 250. So we registered for this webinar, 250 students. But we've seen very good number. Well, I think more than 180 students have attended. It's a really a big change. Mm -hmm. But you want to have for the, want to see for the change. The, so mm -hmm. unless they attend this sort of webinars, yeah, they don't know really what they are doing, what they have to do, and mm -hmm. what the industry expects. Yeah. So I think uh, in this in that way, uh, this program is really a wonderful day mm -hmm. for all of us. And maybe also for the students also, I hope. I hope. So, so. I, I yeah. think, uh, give the confidence to talk freely, to contact freely with the, now, so if it, maybe the faculty members, maybe somewhat have, they may maintain some different distance, but they sure. need not necessary to maintain the same distance with the seniors like you, super mm -hmm. seniors like you. Yes, so uh, unless they, uh, they are free to ask questions, nobody will come for their help. Mm -hmm. So let the students to come down to ask the help or guidance or mentorship, whatever may be, yes, with the seniors, super seniors like you. Yes, sir. So I think this way they can develop. So even if you want to go mm -hmm. for any good industry, they must get the help of our alumnus. Absolutely. So it gives them much more confidence with them. Yes, sir. So I hope. So we'll mm -hmm. inform the principal to join shortly. Yes, anyway, sir. thank you. Yeah on behalf of a placement and training cell. So I hope uh, Professor uh, Dr. Logan will inform the principals shortly to join. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions from students? Anything you wanted to sort of quickly explore while uh, waiting for principal man? Opportunity to open. What about career opportunities in apprenticeship training in government sectors like NLC? Um, so I think uh, that one depends on the industry or the uh, institute itself in the government sector. Um, I'm not well positioned to talk about that, but if you can find out what their requirements are, and then you want to position yourself, maybe reach out to me and I can sort of help you prepare yourself. Uh, in terms of books for self-confidence and leadership qualities, um, again, just send me an email. I'll send you some good books to read. Absolutely. Somebody's raised a hand, CSE. I, I don't think we can... Uh, um, how did you reach your success? I, <laughs> I don't think of myself as being very successful. I uh, find that I have a lot to learn. Uh, but 
whatever i've done so far i think has been because i'm um, i uh, keep learning even now i'm trying to learn uh, some uh, technologies uh, within the crm industry and uh, i would say i don't know that there's a success story just starting up yeah um just keep learning more than anything else starting a business is a really big task yes <clears throat> i don't know how it is these days in tamil nadu uh, but too many people this is actually an interesting topic too many people spend too much time printing business cards registering the uh, private uh, limited company and doing a lot of things like that as opposed to for a business to work start with sales if you get the sale if you pre sell you can go and build the product i have seen so many uh, entrepreneurs here including myself who only had sketches of their product the ui and the ux but they get commitment from the market saying yes this is awesome you know and then you say we're still in development we'll have it ready in 6 months right then you go quickly hire the developers and build it and come back to market so i say starting a business is a big task but it's not that difficult if you go and get market validation beforehand yeah thank you lata hey rafik yeah hey rafik can i take that question maybe add a bit on the nlc one yeah please okay so i did my internship in nlc because uh, my dad worked there um, you know before he retired now he worked in nlc so uh, you know it wasn't i i it wasn't the best of the experiences it's a government organization so i don't think people are too forthcoming in terms of training you or helping you so my suggestion or recommendation there would be to identify where you want to go um, you know where you want to work and choose the internship in line with that right um so we are i i did that i i don't think that's a great that was a great experience for me so it asked folks to focus on picking an internship opportunity which is in line with where you want to get post the internship and thank you ma'am i would like to uh, and uh, welcome our principal ma'am uh, to the end of this webinar session now uh, good morning to all good morning good morning good morning ma'am good morning good morning ma'am so lata is i uh, here lata yes ma'am good yes. morning yes i am here ma'am yes good morning mr swami yes ma'am i'm i'm also here yes yes uh, mr uh, rafik basha yes ma'am i'm here too okay students and all the placement coordinators i am very happy to uh, uh, present sorry, uh, we have uh, sorry yes. ma'am we have vidya shankar uh, uh, also in the call who is the alumni who helped organize this section session along with uh, swami rafik and me yes, vidya yes. shankar vidya shankar okay okay so all of our same batch or uh, different uh, batches yes ma'am yes. all of us are same batch ma'am same batches of a different discipline no yes 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 so i would like to thank all the resource persons i am very happy uh, for the support uh, given by the alumni for our uh, students and uh, i uh, thank all the placement coordinators also i think it's a good start uh, for our students uh, 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 the session is over uh, it is uh, first in session we were uh, addressing some questions ma'am but i think i haven't seen i've seen maybe two more questions so we might have a few more after yes sir yes yes uh, we can continue sir uh, okay yes thank you so much ma'am thank, thank you for all your support and cooperation and encouragement uh, without all of that we wouldn't be able to do this we are planning a series madam uh, yes, so we are planning a yeah we are planning a series on uh, one on entrepreneurship one on uh, core career counseling i have couple of um, folks in my batch shanti shrilata who are working in core okay um, and machine learning and uh, sujata she works on azure aws and so on yes. so planning some core sessions some entrepreneurship sessions one of the questions here was also on starting a business yes. so we have a very successful entrepreneur called ranjit Uh, he's been super successful in our batch, so uh, we'll get him to come and share um, his story and then soft skills leadership. So we'll plan a series, ma'am. Yes, and, sure, uh, sure. Uh, yes. And year on year, we can, you know, repeat that. Like we can have 
Rafiq as our opener even for the next year session yes. whenever it yes. comes yes. out. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much for all your support, ma'am. Without that, it, this wouldn't have been yes, possible. Yes, uh, I must thank all of you for uh, taking efforts. Uh, it is a really amazing for uh, the students' benefit. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Um, so, Lata, should we, I think there's just maybe two yeah, questions. Yeah, I think you should take, uh, finish up the questions, Rafiq. I think that would help. Okay, okay. So I think the one I saw before uh, last was uh, about, I want to be a network engineer. Can I get through the stream with my CCNA skills? Um, I believe your CCNA should give you the certification and credibility to get started. Um, um, I, can, I can take that question, Rafik. I think. Uh, sure, Swami. So yeah. One. So, so I think if you want to be a network engineer, yes, CCNA skill help. I think, but I think I'm not sure how much the campus placement opportunity that you get, right? So, I personally worked in Cisco, um, and uh, right now working in Juniper Network. So, CCNA skills are uh, not really mandatory uh, to get you to your placement per se, but I think it will help you to learn something. But I think that I think those things. Those are the skills that you can learn from uh, standard books from Tannenbaum and other networking uh, books, folks. I think you really don't need an CCNA skill at this moment, but I think it, in your career, when you get into that, uh, you know, support or, uh, you know, or technical support area, people call uh, it as a TAC, uh, Technical Assistant uh, Center. And so those are the engineers need that CCNA or uh, now, other Cisco certified or uh, Juniper certified uh, stuffs, um, but I don't recommend for, uh, for the students at final year level. But I think it is helpful when you get into that career later point of time, right? Right now, I think you, you can stick to the basics of Tannenbaum, other networking books that you read in in your ECE or CSE. Um, um, uh, I think then in in the career path itself, so you don't need to do anything extra for that. Awesome, thanks. Thank you, Swami. Uh, Mohan Raj from Mechanical wants to know if uh, which is more significant, communications or technical knowledge to get placement. And uh, my recommendation would be, Mohan Raj, that uh, you focus on technical knowledge. You are an engineer first, so you have to make sure that is your foundation. The communication skills are very important, but if you have nothing to communicate, I don't. Uh, you know, it's not going to be useful to you, right? So definitely make sure you are um, you focus on that. But then you, that you have a bare minimum of communications that you can articulate what you need to get out, at least the technical stuff. Even if you don't forget all the ninja stuff and all the, you know, the cool interviewing tips, right? That you can just communicate the technical knowledge that you have with you. That's my recommendation. Uh, Lata or uh, Swami or Vidya Shankar, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I think it's a combination of both. Um, you know, core skills, of course, we need um, any domain, any technical skill that we are good at. Uh, but communication and soft skills are extremely important. And I think it's important to identify what our key skills are as an individual and map that and develop on that. So skills mapping, uh, being aware and identifying the strengths and opportunities uh, in oneself, I think that is the starting point in my opinion and experience. Very true, very true. Um, we have another question. Uh, should I wait for op getting opportunities in make industry or should I be open to all, even after sometimes I get a job in make industry? Um, <coughs> in my person, uh, I'll be fresher in the make industry. I wanna, and in my person, I would like to work in core. I would say, uh, that you uh, definitely, it's a, it's a situation that depends on your personal situation. Because if you, uh, there are people who depend on you to get a job and start to bring in income, then be open to everything. But if you have the, uh, uh, the ability to wait and get the exact kind of job that you want, uh, I would say it's worth waiting. So it really depends on where you are. Um, in, in terms of your personal situation. Um, another question is, I'm an electronic student. If I wish to enter into core industry, means what are the basic skills important for that? Swami or Lata, maybe you can answer. 
Ich finde den doch vor in der Stimme. <coughs> okay, so what I would, uh, I don't know the name of the person, but um, I mean, Swami can add, but I think, um, you know, it, for a beginner or for a starter, I would think keep your options open and uh, if you are looking for a job opportunity or higher studies, keep your options open and keep a, it a little more broader and explore the first, say, four, five years. Explore, uh, you know, few opportunities and then you will be able to identify what your core strength or skill is and which domain you want to pursue. And then you can narrow down. I would think narrowing down as a fresher, one would be high risk uh, if your skills are not lying right there. And the second um, is we may not be able to do that successfully. So I would think keep it open, explore it a bit. Uh, four, five years into the industry, you will clearly know where you want to go, say data or VLSI or whatnot, right? Um, app apps and things like that. So telecom, everything, and then networking. So, you know, keep it a little open in the beginning and after four or five years um, into the industry and getting some hands-on experience, you will be able to narrow down. And then um, on the job experience, I think is the best way to learn and develop those, um, you know, experience, uh, domain knowledge and skills. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Lata. I think, I think that that's the way we can go about it. But I think, you know, um, and, and reality, I mean, once you get into an area first two, three years, the uh, changing to a different field is become a little complex uh, in terms of, you know, your package or your skills that you need and all the stuff. It is a trade-off that you need to make between, uh, you know, what area. It may be initial first two years, you can make a call and change it. But I think, yes, uh, but I think you ought to give a shot at least first one year, we'll know where you want to work and is this the area of interest or not, right? So otherwise, I mean, um, you, you need to choose when you are in college, but I think, you know, you don't get an opportunity always that uh, what area you're interested, right? So, so I think you need to take a, a stab at some other opportunity that you get and then make a call. Like Lata said, that, that's the way that we should go. Uh, I mean, not all, I mean, 95% will not get the same opportunity that they want, right, typically. So it's all about uh, um, in the campus that if you get, that is the only chance, right? Right now, when at, at, at our college campus, I think the opportunities are not many, right? I hear that Accenture, TCS are the only guys that come uh, on a bigger scale. So eventually, I think our college might get there with all the lot of opportunities, but I, I think at this moment, we have to you guys have to go with what has been uh, there in the campus, right? So coming outside and finding the area, this might be a little difficult than what you're looking at, right? So what, what you can get in college. But yeah, if your interest areas, like somebody was asking about CCNA, I'm surprised that, you know, people know about CCNA and want to networking skills, right? These are all niche area that typically you don't get into, uh, you know, immediately, right? I mean, even uh, in, in a bigger uh, campuses, Cisco go and hire only two folks, three folks. Uh, since I worked there and we go to, uh, you know, top colleges, IIT, uh, NITs and VITs, we don't hire more than five folks in each college, right? So, so it's opportunities are pretty small. And uh, so some of the areas, it's not that you know, as easy as that you get. But I think once you get into area that or the job that you get in the campus or the job that you go out of the college and get it, then I think you can figure out. And then, I mean, if you're you feel that you know you are not in the areas like you know the CCNA or other networking. Then I think you can go and study CCNA and then look for an opportunity. Right at college, there is no need of uh, any other skills other than your basics. Right, basic engineering skills is what we need. Just stick to your basics. Uh, if you are ECE, computer science, you need to know the computer skills, programming skills, aptitude. These are the basic things across the areas that you need. I mean, it doesn't matter whether core area or non-core. All those things. I'm not talking about the one which is like BHEL or NLCs. There you need typical academic knowledge. And if you go out of other, you know, areas like if you want to go networking or other, you know, ITs, uh, machine learning, data analytics, all this IT sector I put under the same bucket. You need aptitude and basic programming skills, right? Basic programming, not even advanced. Basic programming you should be knowing about in any of the languages, right? I mean, we've been I've been discussing with a lot of uh, 
um, uh, campus, uh, uh, you know, coordinators uh, across your student batches as well as on the previous seniors. And they've been telling that, you know, you don't need to worry about anything advanced. You stick to very basic programming skills. I think now we have hacker rank, uh, higher, higher view, some other tools that you have. You guys go and practice there. And basic programming skills is what we need. You don't need any other extra skills to get into IT sector, private sectors, right? I mean, if, if it is a BHL and NLC, I'm not sure um, uh, we have that expertise to comment on what is needed. But I think I assume mainly it will stick to your academic uh, area of this one. But BHL, you ought to be, uh, you know, no board, what you prefer for gate and all those stuff, right? So, so you ought to stick to that. But otherwise, any other things, stick to basic. Uh, just be prepared for aptitude and... Uh, uh, and, and and programming skills. That that's that's all. It it'll help you anywhere. You can decide on what jobs that you come come across. You can attend and then clear it. Thank you, Swami. Uh, hopefully that was uh, that clarified it for you. Uh, we have a few more questions. Um, so, yeah, from... I see one question that you know. Um, there are two questions. I think EC guy, EC student says that I'm open minded to express our thought or yeah. question asked me or did focus in our answer in terms of our power selection. Um, do you want to answer that, Rafik? Yeah, sure. So if I understand right, I believe the question is asking should we be honest in our opinion or should we sort of be careful in our response so that we don't maybe offend the interviewer or you know we try to make sure that they are not they're happy and uh, it's a tough one <laughs> you know i think it's uh, i would say at this stage while you are still exploring yourself your own opinions your own thoughts uh it is better to uh not be too uh too out of the box in your response uh, because they are essentially looking for people who have certain amount of creativity, certain amount of initiative and honesty, but they also want to make sure that they that you will fit within the culture, right? So if in your research before the interview itself, you find that this is not going to be a fit for me, then maybe that's probably not the right company for you. Because hopefully, by the time you get to the interview, you are actually uh, aligned with some values of the company in terms of the kind of work they do, the kind of products they create, the kind of... Uh, uh, core values that they articulate in their website. So I would say, uh, try to try to be honest, but also try to make sure it doesn't affect your selection chances. You like, you know, like for example, the failure, right? You can, you can talk about a failure or your weakness without, yeah, and you can turn it into a, into a strength by saying that I recognize this weakness in me, and that I'm working on it. And that I'm proactive in the way I'm doing this, right? So again, you can, you can. It's it's all about phrasing and your communication skills. When at least for that part of the interview. Um, somebody asked, "Do you think mech industries will bloom in India?" Uh, real quick, I believe the chances are it will because the mechanical uh, industries are just it's a global phenomenon. There's a lot of work to be done in terms of uh, if you look at the big problems that we need to solve as humanity. There's a lot of mechanical engineering problems in there. And India, if, uh, uh, I think, I mean, the US is, a the, China is a manufacturing giant, right? But the U India does have room for growth within specific niche industries in the mech industry. Um, from Darshana, there's a lot of people who choose their career in core and softwares, but some lack motivation to become a professor. Um, to become a good and best professor, I would say continue your academics, continue to do your master's and a PhD. If you can get a PhD, nothing like it, and then you will be definitely well set to become a professor because we definitely need good educators. We've seen several batchmates of ours who have gotten into the teaching profession themselves. And I think you know that's one great way in which you can give back to the community and uh, help the next generation of students as well. Uh, anything else, Lata, Swami, either of you have seen anything you want to answer? No, so I was going to add for, um, you know, the uh, how to answer an interviewer. Should I be straight or should I be diplomatic? Uh, my answer to that would be, um, you know, put yourself in the interviewer's shoes and say, hey, if I was an interviewer, what would I expect? 
hmm. from a candidate and of course like rafik said if you want that job right so that's one and um, for the professor question i would say follow your heart uh, right doesn't matter you want to be a professor you want to be an it professional what not mechanical um, you know big b entrepreneur follow your heart you don't go wrong with your instincts most often it's a little philosophical but i i think that's what has worked for me at least very true um have we missed anything Um, yeah, just, those who are failures in the placements, they achieved better in life. For place, the people achieve better. Was is a question, Rafik? The uh, last yeah, probably, one. I think I will take that one, uh, Rafik. Sure, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, I mean, we didn't have uh, placements at all, right? Probably, I would have attended uh, maybe more than twenty interviews or maybe thirty interviews. Um, get you into that one. so i can i would uh, probably say that you know i would be in a comfortable position than who get got placed in campus right so campus is just one thing and uh, i'm just giving my example i've seen many guys uh, in fact uh, did not get a job for more than 6 years i've been better placed uh, mm-hmm. than uh, who got a placement or who got a job right there are folks like uh, you know who started their own companies after a struggle of uh, 14 years or 15 years and uh, they almost uh, in terms of achievements they they beat i mean almost all the folks right i would i would say personally say that you know some of the entrepreneurs even beat some of the you know the guys who have been in highly positioned uh, jobs in corporates right so there is nothing like that there is no failure at all i mean uh, um, not getting a job even of first 10 years 15 years also there are folks who uh, you know um, got a, i mean got a job later some some folks started their own companies then achieved better so the interview failures are even i do after with 22 years of experience i go in interview i still get not get a job right it still happens right so it is not that you know in one interview will make you a person entire life right so nothing like that even after 25 years of experience you might not get a job that you want that's a failure no it's not a failure your um, your uh, frequency or your skills does not match that job that's all it is right so there's nothing like that failure that uh, there is no in there's no failure in the interview that is as good as that it is like they are not uh, they don't want you does not mean that it is a failure for you it is they just they don't want you at this moment yep you please want to add lata rafik uh, no i think you covered it well shobhi yeah you did yeah uh there's one more question what are the steps to start a new startup company and what is the perfect time to start up after graduating uh the time to start is now if you have the perfect idea right and if you know exactly which market did you know think like an entrepreneur right go back to that slide think like an entrepreneur and validate your um, your uh, idea i have seen several friends of mine who sunk a lot of money personal money into products that they didn't actually go and see if there's a need for it so create a minimum viable product really create a nice really good looking slide deck and go pitch it and if people say yes i will pay money for this then you know you have something or search for pitch festivals you can pitch your ideas to a lot of different startup pitch festivals so go there pitch your idea and somebody says yeah i like this idea i'm going to give you some seed funding so that's another idea but in general i would say as a fresher unless you've already been doing something on the side yourself you probably do not have the real world experience so i would say try to get started with a job of some sort and maybe develop this on the side your minimum viable product and uh, that would be the safest way to do it. um last question i think right uh, i think uh, how many more questions should we take lata swami Yeah, I think we are good here, Rafik. Uh, especially on entrepreneurship and all, I think we are going to have a separate yeah, session yeah, like yeah. this one. So we could take this question and then probably close that. Okay. So uh, which one should we take? I, I'll let either of you take the last question then. I think. Yeah, there is a last question. Uh, this this big companies like Ashok Leyland, Tata Motors, and other startups go to IITs and NITs to recruit. How we can get a job in those companies? Uh, that's. Okay, no problem. Yeah. I'll I'll take it. If, if, yeah. if you want, 
Sure. So I mean, so I think guys, like these are the core companies, right? I'm not. I'm saying we, we. I'm not sure any of on the bridge that we have expertise yeah. on the manufacturing or automate automated uh, automotive industries. Um, uh, so I know uh, folks of uh, go join lateral um, in, in Ashok Leyland and other uh, startups. So uh, there is no other options uh, that we need to go lateral to these companies which, which they can't hire uh, in only big colleges. Uh, IITs and NITs, right? For example, I worked uh, worked in Cisco, and they will only go for IITs and NITs and few colleges in Tamil Nadu, right? It doesn't mean that we can't get that, right? So I I, I'm, I was working for eight nine years there. So so it is all about lateral. Once you get the initial uh, breakthrough, uh, then I think it is all your individual skill set will take you anywhere. So there no nobody. I don't think any company stops you once you have one right experience. No company stops you that. I mean, irrespective of where you study, I think it becomes very uh, trivial thing uh, where you studied once you get to your first job, right? I mean, it is all about your experience and your attitude matters to get into any big companies. I, I don't think it, it, it's an issue. So GC Salem or even the private colleges, uh, which is used to be ranked low, there are folks in uh, all big companies uh, top MNCs today. So I think it does, there's no issue of what college you studied, right? So you will you will get in lateral uh, opportunities for sure. Um, thank you, Swami. Actually, if you guys don't mind, I want to take one last question, which I think is a good way to wrap up this session. Um, and that is, what are some differences you've noticed with adolescents today as compared to, compared to when you were that age? And I think uh, this sort of ties into the fact that you all have access to resources uh, that we did not have, right? So you are different in the sense you have so much more awareness and knowledge and tools to act on the knowledge that we did not have, right? We didn't, we didn't have this alumni uh, group that was coming and saying, we're gonna help you and develop you or give you our, in the, you know, share our insights. We did not have the ability to look up a, a company that is going to come to campus. So in some ways, I would say you are in a position of privilege compared to us. And I would say that uh, it is your responsibility. With the great power comes great responsibility, right? So take that responsibility and uh, make sure you can optimize all that you have access to today. So you are, uh, you are the best and I wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. Lokavani, ma'am, are we good to wind up the session? I think this was a great session. Thank you, Rafik, yes, for that. Yes, ma'am, ma once again. Uh, thank you, uh, all of you. On behalf of principal, placement officer, coordinators, and student community, express my sincere thanks to Ms. Latta, ma'am, uh, for initiating this webinar series, Mr. Rafik, for his presentation. Uh, Mr. Swami and uh, Vidya Shankar sir uh, for their coordination, volunteership and involvement uh, exhibited for the upliftment of our student community. Uh, we'd be happy enough if you could share your views to our students on various other platforms too in the forthcoming session, sir. Uh, and uh, at this juncture, I also expect the students to make use of all opportunities provided by the GC alumni. And uh, thank you once again to all the alumni of GC Salem. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you all.